Happy Wednesday! It's time for yet another installation of our Patch Party Block of the Month. This is Block 6, Cage Birds. Let's get started. Block 6, and I am full of tricks today, although I can't take any of the credit. No, I did not design this incredibly cool Patch Party quilt behind you. This was done by our fantastic pattern partner, Lila Gardunia. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Thank you for joining me here at Making It Fun. We are deep. We are in the middle of our patch party. This is a block of the month. This is block six. If you're following along, all five of the first months are out there for you. We've been posting them on the first Wednesday of each month. Super exciting. Today's really cool because we're gonna build on some of the skills we did in block five. Now, if you're new to the party, you're just joining along, and this looks like a terrific way to get into quilting or it's just a fun project to follow along with. It is, but one of the things I like to do here other than, or I should say also including supporting our local quilt shops, our online retailers, is supporting our pattern partners. So this particular project, it's called Patch Party. There is a pattern that I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and purchase. Links are down in the description below for that kind of stuff. And of course, you can ask in your local quilt shops as well. You have the pattern, I'm the educator, I'm doing the free videos for you to follow along. So the math is on the paper. I'm gonna protect the sizes to protect the innocent, you know what I'm saying, and like I said, we're having a blast here. Now, if you were looking carefully at the block over here on the wall and you're already picking up on what I said from last month when we were building some four patches, starting with some strips, right? Look carefully at the block. Now, to this month, we're gonna have two. We have the four patch here. We have another four patch here, super easy. This one is a solid square. That's gonna be really easy to create, even for the new quilters out there, right? And then this one here is this really kind of cool, the flying geese or the free bird or the caged birds, the name of the pattern, super fun. So we're gonna build it all. We're using our cotton couture and our fairy frost. So it's the azalea color fairy frost, the berry color cotton couture, both are fantastic Michael Miller basics fabrics. Advertising's over, information's over. Let's dive into the pattern. Now, we are making two of this block. Some of the blocks you'll make more than two of, but this one, this month, we're making two of. And I've already made my strip sets. I've taken these two long, skinny colors and I've sewn them together to make companion strips that we'll go into as we're gonna get started here on our four patches. So just a quick reminder, I have combined my, what is considered a print and a solid and a background and a solid. And now that they've been made down, I need to go ahead and create a few more sub parts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take out my handy dandy ruler and rotary cutter. Oh, I do wanna point out, when I press these, I press them both to the purple side because in pressing them to the purple side, um, both of them are gonna have their seams that will allow us to nest. If all of that sounds a little foreign to you, stick with me in today's video and I'll teach you what all of that stuff means that I just rambled off there. But uh, before then, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find a line on my ruler that I'm putting on the seam that I created. That way that the next parts into the pieces or the subunits are created to be nice and square off of our seam because that's what's gonna make our blocks appear, notice the word appear, to be more square. So I'm gonna need two of those and then we're gonna need a few more of these. So I'm just gonna blast through this real quick, but not so fast that I get the wrong cut made. Okay, and now just four of those little sub cuts there, and let's build together our four patches. So we're gonna rotate two of them. So it's like a checkerboard, one, two, three, four pieces, four patch. If you haven't heard or seen this before, flip them over, use your thumb and your forefinger to kind of wiggle or nest together those two seam allowances. Head over to a quarter inch, everything. If you're brand new to quilting, Everything we do is that same. So you see the same edge guide, the same foot on my machine for this entire project. Whether it takes me an hour or a week or a day or a month or whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and just sew through my pieces consistently always so that all of them match up. Okay, let's build all of this together. We don't need to be in a big hurry today. We're making some easy parts and pieces and a little refresher on our four patch starting with the strip sets. 
Another quick advertisement I'll toss at you while the machine's running. If you are not comfortable with sewing strips together, I've got a fabulous video I put out a few, um, well, I guess it's a couple months ago, and um, it's doing very well, and I uh, got some great information, successful strips, simple steps to successful strip sewing or something like that. I played with a bunch of S's because I can't say them very well. I thought it'd be funny. Okay, let's go ahead and now we're gonna combine our background or our solid and our print squares. We're going to do one of these. This is what makes the center, the middle square, right? The other ones have the background color. This one has the print color also involved. Same trick though. We're just going to nest these up and stitch them together. Okay, and as we pull our little units out, our block units out, we can cut them on the thread cutter. I'm gonna go ahead and move on over to the ironing board. We're gonna press these pieces, and they are a checkerboard, so they're gonna, really at this point, it's just gonna go whichever way. There's no real um, easy or, or definitive way to press, I guess I should say. It's all very easy, just not definitive. That's what these look like as they finish out. And I was also mentioning, uh, as we were going over the actual layout of the designs on the actual wall over here, uh, that I said we had the four patch, right? So we had the middle four patch, we had the other ones. We're gonna need two of our squares. At this point, your four patches and your squares should be the same size. So technically, look at this, folks. We're basically making a nine patch. We've got five of the nine done already, so we've got just one last unit to make together today, and that's gonna be this really kind of cool flying geese style unit. Now, we approach triangles and squares a bunch of different ways in quilt making. So today, these two squares were cut straight a grain as a strip, then they were subcut straight a grain. Okay, so if you're kind of familiar with quilting, that now means this angle or this edge is on the bias. If you're brand new to quilting, you're terrified because all you've been told is fear the bias, fear the bias, don't fear the bias. I'm telling you friends, don't worry about it. We're just gonna slow down, we're just gonna take nice, now I've adjusted my sewing machine down to a smaller stitch length. So if I was at 2.2 or 2.5, something like that, I'm down to a 1.8, a 2.0. Shorter stitches don't move the fabric as much. So little things like this, but we're just gonna take the bias nice and slow. As I do this, I'm gonna marry together, and we're making four of these blocks. So you really can chain piece this. I'm gonna take you through each of the steps for creating one of the four that you're gonna do, and then you'll magically see me come back with all four done in just a second. But let's start with two triangles together. We're stitching on the bias. You're stitching on the hypotenuse. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lower my presser foot. Let's do it this way so you can all see a little bit better. I'm gonna lower my presser foot down out there. Needles right at the beginning of the triangles. And now as I start to stitch, nice and slow, you might want to have a single whole plate on your machine at this point if you're using your quarter inch foot and edge guide so that that corner doesn't get sucked into the throat plate of the machine. You've heard that happening before. Okay, so I just stitched through, nice, easy, simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut our thread, and this is different than what most of us teachers will teach. There's a specific reason, so I want you to focus on what I'm gonna say now if you don't hear anything else. We are going to press to the light side. It's written in the instructions as press to your background, and it's going to help us put on the next triangle. So I want you to hold your lighter fabric in the air. I never say this. And then we're gonna to press to the light side, okay? And the reason we're doing this is it's, like I said, gonna help us put on the next two parts. Now, as this builds out, we're going to make this into a triangle style unit. That's not gonna work that way. <laughs> My brain plays some tricks on me too, so I wanna teach you how I'm seeing it so that you don't have to struggle. So we're gonna start with just one more triangle as our add-on, and what these triangles are doing, you see they're forming a parallel line this way, but the triangles are running in opposite directions. So if this tip is over here, just put this tip over there. Now this is something else that becomes challenging for us new triangle users. Where do I line up the darn thing? You can see right here, it's bigger than the square. Think about your straight edges or what we're gonna continue on. It's these corners that go weird. So I want you to flip over your triangle and I want you to line up your bottom edge and your outside or your straight edge. And that'll make that corner and that corner hang over 
Don't sweat it. Straight edge, straight edge, and then just make sure you know which edge you're sewing together. We're sewing the purple and the white together. So as I come over here now, I just had a quarter rotation, and I'm gonna start this one just like I did the last. Gentle, right in front, single hole stitch plate, Line up the fabric if I need to. And I'm going to sew all the way through and all the way through those little triangle tips on the edge there. Cut the fabric, or excuse me, cut the thread. Don't cut the fabric. Cut the thread. And then back to the ironing board. And once again, we're going to press into the white fabric. So I'm holding the white fabric up in the air. I am pressing from the purple into the white, what you've to been told not to do over and over again. Breaking the rules with me here today. Okay. And here's this unit. Now we need to put on one more triangle. That was our tip. This is our tip. I want you to put this in here. And again, your double check is it's starting to form a triangle so that later on we're going to form that whole unit. So you're just kind of always spot checking as you work along to make sure that you get it just right. So now I want to line up again that straight edge out there. I'm not worried about the overlap here. I'm going to fold this over, lining up this edge and this top edge up here. You can see now all of these little corners are hanging over. And once again, heading back into the sewing machine with that quarter inch seam allowance, tucking it in so that that tip doesn't get snagged or fall into the hole on a nice slow pace. And even though I did mention you can chain PCs when I was doing them to prep for this video, I did one to make sure it worked. And then I did the next three, just like I taught you one triangle at a time, but you can do them in rows if you need. Now, what I like to do after I press again, this last one is going to be pressed into that background fabric. We have a beautiful triangle. Now this is really cool, right? Let's take a moment and you can just roll your rotary cutter over the tips those triangles if you want. If you were being super accurate, of course, you would take your ruler, especially across this line, because this is the line we're going to stitch together next. So if there was a little bit of a jog that got set out in the middle, you could just kind of make that really super straight, right? Of course. <laughs> now, we're going to take the larger, we had two different size triangles. We had smalls and larges, if those are the sizes. So now where the large goes on to here, we're going to just lay these over. And now the triangles are going to match up beautifully, perfectly, as you can see, sewing together those hypotenuses, but they're still biased technically. So, well, at least the top one's the bias because it was cut the same, that big square cut down. I guess the bottom ones probably aren't biased anymore, but either way, just take it slow, light pressure, stitch it on through ever so gently. Let me show you what this looks like real quick. And I'm going to take this one and I'm also going to press in now into the larger background color. That's going to make everything open up so much more nicely, make my seams work in my favor, of course. And as I pull it out, there it is. It is again, the same size as my other squares, which is what we're really shooting for here. It'll make construction so much easier. Let's take a moment and just uh, trim off those dog ear, those long corners there. And now what I want us to all do together is take a moment and build the rest of these units. So I'll be right back with my next three constructed. So we have all nine pieces for this really cool nine patch cage birds going back together. Be back in just a second, folks. And I am back. I told you it wouldn't take long. I have all four of these interesting, like flying geese, loose geese. We're going to call them free birds. These are the free bird blocks for the rest of the show. Stop yelling that across the band, right? The band doesn't want to play free bird again. Sorry, being silly. Let's get back to construction before I get us all completely distracted today. But that would be kind of a fun uh, thing in our comments. Why don't you let me know what is your favorite song or how many times that silly free bird joke has been used. Anyways, let's, let's get back to construction. We are going to start with our four patch in the center, our four patch using our solids and our prints. But if you look very closely at your pattern, there's a very distinct layout. So what I want to point out to you really is that the prints touch the prints, the solids touch the solids. So in order for this to work correctly, I'm going to rotate this a quarter turn and I'm going to build this for you today exactly how you see it in your pattern, okay? So really what I want to do is I want to start with that 
uh, four patch right here in the center. And I do know, like I did say, that my solid squares are going to touch the same fabrics. Okay, hopefully that helps you. And I'm double checking, I can see that that's happening right over here. So yes, you're gonna follow your purples and you're gonna follow your prints through the rest of the block. So following our prints. Now we're gonna go ahead and follow our purples by bringing in the other four patches and we're just gonna set them just like this. Now for the rest of the project, the triangles kind of point outward, but they're also going to be in line with their like colors. Okay, so as I drop that in, you can just see they're pointing white colors. The next two will point opposite. So I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put this here and it is a very simple construction when you're putting the blocks back together. We've had some fun with me getting a few of them wrong in the past months. Continually enjoy that, I do. I love not getting it right and having you all find that out. Today I think we're cool, we're gonna do a double check. We're looking at our purple solids going through here, the cotton couture, the fairy frost running this way, and now we're just going to begin to construct very simply. So I'm gonna start with a couple of blocks down here, folding on over, lining up the edges, and heading back into my quarter inch seam allowance. Again, always using that same size seam allowance. Really important for good accuracy in your quilt making when you're following a pattern, because it's how they write them. They write them to be that way. Bring it back over to the board, making sure that I have my free bird in the right spot. Now I'm gonna grab this other solid block over here. Now you notice I didn't press. I wanna go ahead and just lay in all of my blocks first, and I wanna determine which is gonna be the best way to press to make my rows go back together. And that's a good trick whether you're doing blocks or you're doing columns and rows, the whole quilt, whatever little parts and pieces, always considering how can you iron to really benefit the construction of your project. Okay, is that right? No, it's not. Let's bring this right back over there. Fairy Frost in order. For this block, I'm gonna fold it in, but I do have this point right here where the seams came together that I can match back up with this point. So as I get there, I'm gonna try to make that happen. We'll do the same thing on the other side, but just make sure you don't start going so fast that you were to get those triangles heading in the wrong direction. We haven't used the seam ripper much in this series of videos, so let's not get started today. I'm afraid I just jinxed myself something terrible. Sounded a bit like Eeyore, didn't it? No, no. Okay, again, double checking. Fairy Frost are lining up, triangles are lining up. And we're gonna finish out this last row like we did the first row. And now once that's done, let's go ahead and put all of our rows back in order, double check to make sure we have everything appropriately stitched together. And now let's discuss how we're gonna deal with our pressing. So if, like with the other blocks when we did our little four patch, I want my seams to nest. I want them to kind of flop in opposite directions so it makes everything line up nicely. Well, this solid block's gonna ease, be real easy to press over, and this is gonna be a little easier to press over than this, this hard triangles you see in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press out on these rows and we're gonna press in on the center. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hold this up and I'm basically gonna take my iron and I'm gonna press out over the solid square. Lift this back up to make sure that none of the, the seams went weird when I put the iron on it the first time. And now I'm gonna press out into my four patch. If you need to add a little steam to your iron, you could, but you can see that's nice, but nice and crisp. So if those ones went out, this next one's gonna go in. So here I'm gonna hold this up and I'm actually gonna press in to the nine patch, excuse me, to the four patch, there's only four little squares there. And then I'll do the same on the other side, holding it up, pressing in. When you bring this one back around, make sure everything stayed correct. But what I wanted to point out is that the seam allowances here now are in opposite directions, okay? So that's all we need to do. Last one will be like the first one pressed out or into the solid squares. What I'm really also teaching here, if you didn't pick up on it, the fabric that has the least amount of seams 
or is the least dense, like the difference between like a batik fabric and a regular print fabric. Whoever has the less going on will want to fold better. So if you have a lot of seams, it's going to want to stay straight. If you have a lot of density to your fabric, like something like a batik, it's going to want to stay straight. So just little tips, you can kind of spot check your work as you're getting ready here. This is set up, so while it's in my hand, I'm just gonna flop it right over, line up those seam allowances, and come on over to the machine. Now I'm just looking to match up those different little stitch points and all of the other little squares I have along the union, make it really easy there. Get off to a great start, and we should have a really nicely put together block when we're done. Now at this point, as I come off the machine, I'm just gonna kind of press towards that solid or what would have been the away from the middle. And this just makes it easier to get the other row in place. Maybe add a little steam there, looking good. Okay, I bet you're getting as excited as I am. We're just gonna put on this last row here and we will have completed our cage birds for block number six. And here it is, the final pressing. Super fantastic, really, really fun and easy block, but a couple of really cool techniques. Hopefully some of you learned some new things today. I really like this free bird block as I'm calling it from our caged birds. This is how it is right off of your pattern in order. Double check, Rob, did you get it right? It looks like it, not a bad deal. Now, I know you all have really been enjoying the cameo appearances that we've been having from our wonderful designer, Lila herself. I asked her today if she'd like to join us for the video and she says, no, I'm head down, I'm busy cutting all day. So sorry she wouldn't play along for the fun with us at the party. Someone's gotta get the work done. I guess it isn't gonna be any of us because we're gonna be too busy patch partying our way through the months. We'll see you in a month with block seven for the patch party, but I will see you in a week with another terrific video right here at Making It Fun. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.